Hello my frugal friends, welcome back to our place for another video. Today it's a stock take, meal plan, grocery haul kind of day. It's the start of the week and what I usually like to do is have a look at what we've got on hand already. Shop by fridge, freezer and pantry first. Use up all of the things that I've already purchased and try to build a meal plan for the week ahead starting with the things that we've already got and then go and fill in the gaps and purchase what we need. Now the last couple of weeks have been a little bit different. If you guys are new around here, my name is Nikki. I'm an Aussie mum and I love sharing all of the tips and tricks that have helped our family get more bang for our buck so we can live the life we want. And for us, that is traveling full time in our caravan. And at the moment, we are working our way up the West Australian coast. So just to recap for you guys who are new and for you guys just to get up to speed with where we are, if you've been following along for a while, you may remember that a couple of weeks ago, I did some massive big shops. Six weeks ago, it was a big stock up in Geraldton. Four weeks ago, it was a massive big stock up in Carnarvon. But we have not seen a supermarket since then. It's been a little while. We've spent quite a bit of time working our way up the Ningaloo coast. We did some time in around Denham and Monkey Mire. And while there are IGAs along the way, yes, there is an IGA in Denham. There is an IGA in, or a food works in Coral Bay. And there is an IGA at Exmouth. They are quite remote towns and the prices in those IGAs do reflect that. Nothing against those towns at all. You gotta do what you gotta do to stay in business and that's fine. But we knew that we were heading into that area and we knew we were going to be there for a couple of weeks. So we stocked up in the big towns before we headed out. Well, we are on our last stretch. We have a week in Exmouth before we're heading out to Karajini National Park. There is a Coles supermarket in at Tom Price. So today, I need to do a stock take, see what we still have left on board. Like I said, it's been a few weeks since we've been to the supermarket and we are starting to run on fumes around here. So we're down to the dregs, but these are the things that seem to get left at the end. And if I was to go grocery shopping every week or every fortnight, possibly I wouldn't get around to actually using these things up. So these use it up weeks can be really fantastic if you want to try and save some money at home. You don't need to be traveling full time in a caravan to take advantage of this. But what you can do is stretch out your shops. If you normally go shopping once a week, then once a month or once a quarter, throw in a use it up week where you sit down, you don't go to the grocery sh shops, maybe you don't go for a couple of days, you just push it back. Maybe you don't go for the entire week. It depends how long you can go with the food that you've already got on hand. But what we're going to do is take a stock take of every single thing that we've got here at the moment and work out how many meals that I can come up with without having to go to the supermarket. Let's start by doing a stock take and we'll shop the fridge, freezer and pantry first. So first things first, we're going to need somewhere to write all of this information down. I like to keep it all in my little handy dandy notebook. This is my grocery shopping list. It's also my meal plan. But the reason I like to keep it in a, a notebook as opposed to say having it written on a whiteboard that I wipe off every week is that I have a catalogue of all of the meals that I've come up with going back quite a while. So this is my second notebook. This is my original one, which I still keep because it has weeks and weeks and weeks of ideas in here that I can look back on quickly in those times when I'm stuck for ideas. So having it written down is one of my best tips, I think. Not only do you go to the shops with your weekly meal plan, but you've also got an inventory of all the things that you've got at home already. So you don't get stuck in the trap of buying things that you already have. Perhaps you've forgotten about it. Perhaps it's on a really good deal and you're wondering, gosh, I wonder how much of that I've got at home already. Well, if it's in your handy dandy notebook, then you know. So let's head over to the fridge and we'll start making a list. 
Okay, so we are looking a little bit bare in here. There actually isn't too much to write down. One of the things I obviously want to make sure is that any fresh produce we're using up, I have one carrot left. There are a couple of lemons that were actually gifted to us. I need to work out what I'm going to do with that. And it looks like we've got two apples <laughs> still going strong in the bottom there. One of the big things that I want to make sure that I'm using up regularly is all of our condiments and sauces. It's easy for things to get pushed to the back of the fridge and then not used. So I'm just going to make sure that I am using up all of these things here and anything that's been open for a while that needs to go into the freezer. I use these days to transfer things over. So a couple of things to take note of. I've only got a little bit of apple sauce left in this container and I know that it's been open for a couple of days so I really want to use this up. The tinned fruit I'm not too worried about because I'll definitely use that. But this is some tofu, half a block of tofu in water. Uh, I will need to use that up today as well and just make sure that I'm staying on top of this stuff. The other thing I have is some cooked rice. If I'm not going to use this today, this needs to go in the freezer. I do find that cooked rice can be kept in the fridge for a couple of days, but day three, I like to transfer it over into the freezer if I'm not going to use it. I do have some hummus. This is made up with some lemon in it. Uh, and this is an open container of hummus. Just wanna make sure, obviously, that anything that's opened is being used. Now, also don't forget this side of the fridge, because I often do, but there's stuff here that we need to make sure that we're using up as well. Particularly for us, it's this little hidey hole here. And yes, look at all of that chocolate. Uh, making sure any little packets of things that get tucked away don't get forgotten and I'm getting in trouble with the fridge so we'll close this up and I'll write all of that down. Okay same deal in the freezer and she's looking pretty empty as well. So I do have a big bag of scraps here that I use to make stock and that is something that I need to do. This bag is pretty full. Um, as you can see in there I've got things like kale stems and I've got onion peels and the tops of carrots. Any veggie scraps that I can use to make a veggie stock goes in here and then once this bag's full I will cook it up and make some veggie stock. I also have bags of ice and some ice in behind there but it's pretty much all we've got here. And over this side, oh, there's a couple that didn't make it in my bag. Uh, what have we got? Some bits of celery, I think. Uh, pine nuts. And we've got some buffalo style cauliflower wings from Aldi there. They're quite delicious, a little bit spicy. Put those on my list downstairs in the freezer. Not too much left happening here. Some frozen veggies, I've got green beans, corn, some spinach by the looks of things, uh, some frozen peas, and a couple of odds and ends that still need to be used up. Block of tempeh, some koftas there to be used, frozen strawberries that I can do something with. And these are the little bags and things that I need to now write down. So I've got some pineapple that's obviously been in there for a while. It's starting to get quite freezer burnt. Need to use that up. It's a little pre-made bag for fajitas. So I've got onion and capsicum in there ready to go. Some frozen cheese. Another block of tofu down the back and lots of bags of celery. So I'm just quickly going to jot all of this down as well. I do keep my nuts in the freezer, so there's quite a few bags of nuts. That's just to stop them going rancid, particularly traveling in a caravan, but also through the heat. So it gets hot in the caravan. If they just stayed in the pantry, they probably wouldn't be very good for very long. Um, and again, don't forget this side of the freezer as well. Lots of nuts and seeds over here as well as a few 
ice breaks. All right, the last spot I need to go through is the pantry and our pantries are really quite deep and dark so our best option might be actually to pull everything out and put them on the bench and then we can see what we've got. Because I know that there isn't heaps in there that might be an easier option. But just to give you guys a quick visual on how this works in the caravan, we have very long deep pantry cupboards which is awesome. We've actually got three of these this is the second one which oh you can see a little bit better in that one but i think to do this i think it might just be easier if we just pull everything out and we'll even have a look over here where we keep all of our tea bags and bits and pieces like that spreads and this is all my little extra supplies and things like that that we do pick up along the way and again this is something that it's worthwhile keeping track of in your notebook just so that you're not buying things that you have pushed to the end of the cupboard or you know a back corner somewhere where you can't see it you may think that your last lot of salad dressing has run out but actually you've got another one that's been poked to the back of the pantry it's just not in sight front of mind so you go and buy another one and maybe they're half price special so then you buy two and what you've actually got is three back at home and you don't need that much salad dressing so that's why i like to go through and do this inventory not every single week but at least every quarter if not once a month go through and just check and see what I've got hiding at the back of these cupboards particularly because you saw how long and how deep these are so not only do we find things that we've forgotten about, because I had completely forgotten that we had nori sheets and rice paper in the back of the cupboard, but it also gives me the opportunity to go through and just reorganize the cupboards again, because I don't know if it's just our place or if it's a universal thing, but things never seem to get put back in the right spot. So I like to have my snacks together and my baking stuff together, but inevitably this all gets mixed up. So I can always go back through my cupboards and just reorganize them again so that we have all the things back in their little homes. Breakfast cereal department, real quick. Uh, we don't eat a lot of actual cereal. We mainly eat oats uh, and do a variety of different things with the oats. So if you remember back to Carnarvon four weeks ago, I bought 12 of these bad boys uh, we have two left and what's left in my oats container so two bags will get us through a week this will get us to tom price but there you go apparently 12 was not excessive um cereal we don't typically do a lot of cereal like I said before so Charlotte has this for special breakfast maybe once a week so she's probably still got four serves left there so I'm not even going to worry about that um, that will last for a while and plain flour is probably the other big thing we do a lot of baking this is my last two kilo bag of plain flour so I'll pop all of that on my list as so well old grains and pulses <laughs> are looking a little bit light on we still have a fair bit of stuff here but uh, we are starting to get to the end of everything so for me to jot down i've got just shy of two kilos of white rice i do have some quinoa about half a box of risoni and that's fairly full that's the couscous uh, I have a one kilo brown basmati rice and one pasta left. So to go with that, and we'll just keep working our way back round. I do have one pesto sauce left. I've got some apple sauce. So I use that for baking. Uh, two lots of jackfruit. Two lots of edamame. I've had these for a while, so I probably need to look at using those up. Chili beans. Um, some fr little mushrooms in a tin. Two lots of the Mexican three bean, two lots of creamed corn, and one tinned corn kernels. No tomatoes, no pasta sauce, no posada, anything like that. We're out completely out of all of that sort of stuff. I do have half a bag of textured vegetable protein left here. 
Uh, most of a big bag of green lentils. Tiny little bit left of yellow lentils. I've also got some yellow split peas. Don't actually know what really the difference is between those, but I'm sure one of you guys do. Um, a, a packet of black beans that I do need to soak and cook. So if I'm going to do that and use those, I need to be organized. So again, this is why the list is really important. Um, I have a packet of French style lentils and some brown lentils, which are almost all gone. I also have a little bit of polenta there as well. So... We are definitely getting to the end of all the stuff that we bought in Geraldton and Carnarvon. But that's okay. I think I've got a couple of ideas at least. We'll see if we can get through a week's worth of stuff. I do have a couple more cupboards to go through. But most of that stuff is what I would consider pantry supplies. I will go ahead and jot that down. But things like flour, vinegar, tea, coffee, um, spreads, Vegemite, peanut butter that sort of stuff not anything that I would really use to make an entire meal but things that I need to know that I've got on hand because I consider them pantry staples so now's the fun part where we get to sit down and work out what exactly are we going to eat this week what ideas have we got so you guys have been watching along at home I would love to hear from you at this point before you see what I come up with I would love to hear your ideas on what you've seen so far and what you would pull together at your place. It's okay if you need to add maybe an extra ingredient or two because I am going to pop into the supermarket just to grab a few extra bits and pieces. But starting with what we already have, shopping our fridge, freezer and pantry, using up the things that we've got. What have you seen where you're like, oh, there's a meal right there. Easy. All right. While you're thinking about that, I'm going to show you what I'm thinking of what I've come up with for now. All right, here's a nice, easy one to get the ball rolling. We call this one green pasta. It is one of Charlotte's favorite meals. And you're just going to need some pesto pasta and some green vegetables. And it works with any vegetables that you've got. So I've got beans, peas, and spinach. So that's a really good start. The penne pasta, the wholemeal one, part of the reason why we like this is because it is absolutely loaded with protein. This has 12.6 grams of protein per serve. There's five serves in here. This will feed our family of three, four really large serves. Five if we push it with a little bit of extra stuff. So already there we've got a good dose of protein per meal. But I could easily go ahead and throw in some tofu or some TVP. Which again has a really decent amount of protein in it as well. So this is your textured vegetable protein. Uh, this one has 26 grams per serve. 52.8 grams per 100 grams so i'm not really worried about protein i just bring that up because we don't eat a lot of meat and usually somebody asks me about it but i've got half a block of tofu in there as well which i think works better and i'll grate that up and put that in with our pesto pasta but i've got options i'm also seeing the beginning of some fajitas here as well and I'm looking at the stuff in my freezer and thinking some of this really needs to be used up. It's starting to be a bit freezer burnt. So here is some capsicum and some onion. It is starting to get a little bit frosty, so I need to use that. And a really easy way to do that will be some fajitas. I will need to either buy some wraps or make some myself and probably get a few more salad ingredients to go with it. Some tomatoes, some lettuce. Keep it pretty basic, but there's another quick and easy meal. I don't need to add a lot to it to get it going, but um, seasonings is another big thing to think about. And I have a ton of different seasonings on hand as well. So it's always a good idea just to have a quick look in the seasonings cupboard and see what inspiration you get from in there as well. Because again, these are things that need to be used up on a fairly regular basis. Once they're open, you know, they need to be used up. So raid your spice cabinet as well to get inspo for your meals. Another really quick and easy meal would be 
beans and rice, which we actually quite like. We do a lot of Mexican flavored stuff at our place or Tex-Mex or whatever you want to call it. We like it. If it's not your jam, then that's cool. But um, it's a really easy way to, again, quick and easy meal. It's good source of veggies because you can chuck in whatever you want i'd probably throw in some corn and some spinach that's what we've got but if i'm going to the shops i may grab some fresh tomato and some iceberg lettuce and maybe even a capsicum who knows but again another really easy source of protein so your beans have five grams of protein per 100 grams of your beans but surprisingly enough White rice is actually not a bad source of protein. There's about 7 grams of protein per 100 grams of rice for your white rice serve, if you have a look there. 7.2 grams per 100 grams. And I like to pair white rice with quinoa. I don't love quinoa on its own. I don't really love white rice on its own. But the two of them together seem to be a bit of a hit for me anyways. And again... Quinoa is another great source of protein, great sources of fiber and all that sort of stuff. But uh, your protein on your quinoa is 14.4 grams per 100 grams of quinoa. So again, no, there's no meat or dairy, but I'm not worried about protein in the slightest. All right, so, you know, I get it. Not everybody digs the whole Mexican vibe on their food, but here's another quick and easy one, again, using the white rice and the quinoa, and that's dal. It is so easy to pull together. I like to use split lentils, so I've got split yellow lentils. I've also got split yellow peas. I don't exactly know what the difference is, but I do use the peas as well in my dal. Maybe that's not a cool thing. I don't really know because I don't know a lot about Indian cooking, but it works, so I still do it. My preference would be red split lentils or yellow split lentils, so I will use up what I've got here. Um, but I think whatever works, works. It might not be entirely traditional, but this will be a yummy meal as well. So I'll chuck in a carrot. I've got some green beans and some spinach. Charlotte absolutely loves dal, so I know this is going to be a hit with her. Again, we will need some spices, but you know you can keep it pretty simple. Uh, curry powder would be the other thing that I need, which I haven't grabbed, it, grabbed out, but... I don't have onion and garlic at the moment, but I'll just use my onion and garlic seasonings and still make it work. So there's another really easy meal. We'll do a dal. And again, I don't really know why I'm uh, harping on about this today, but apparently it's a thing. 23.3 um, grams of protein in 100 grams of split peas. So another really great source of protein, remembering we've still got the white rice and the quinoa from earlier. And we're about the same on the uh, split lentils. So there we go. Filling, yummy, full of protein, full of veggies, pretty basic, quick, easy meal. Now, I hope one of you guys at home is actually writing down all of these ideas because I'm not at this point. <laughs> I'm just working through all of the ideas that are running through my head. Um, I will go ahead and obviously jot those down in my notebook. But as you can see, I'm actually pulling together quite a few dinners pretty quickly and pretty easily. And that is usually where I start. I start with my dinners because I do find that our lunches are typically leftovers or I will actually then go and plan some lunch specific meals that I'll go and cook and then we'll just have them as lunch but they're interchangeable whether or not they're dinner or lunch I just need to dump all of these ideas down onto paper get them out of my head onto paper and then we'll see how many we're actually left with how many of those ideas will work well as leftovers or give me leftovers or will work well cooked ahead and used as lunch and then we'll fill in the gaps from there. So if you're feeling overwhelmed with meal planning, this is the way that I do it that, find, that I find works really well and isn't completely overwhelming. Start with what you've got and just see what ideas pop up from there. Maybe you get two ideas. It doesn't really matter, but it's a start. And then you can fill in the gaps from there. You're not trying to fill in a completely blank 
meal plan, thinking about breakfast, lunches and dinners for each day, trying to come up with different ideas and new ideas, having a look through your cookbooks. Start with what you've got and start with the meals that your family likes. What is it that's in your cupboard right now that you can look at and you go, you know what, I know my family likes that and I know they will eat that. Put it on your meal plan. It's okay. It doesn't all have to be fancy and Instagram worthy. It has to be edible and it has to be what your family wants to eat. So this is our list so far. One of the things I do like to do is just write down the ingredients that I'm going to use for each of our meals and anything that I need to go and purchase, I will write in a different color so that I can see what I've got going on. Uh, whether or not I purchase those things or I move to a different idea will depend when I get to the supermarket, but this is the basis. So I've got four meals here already. These were pretty low hanging fruit. They were fairly immediately obvious to me that that's what I could make. But I have a big long list of things over here that need to be used up. So my next thing is to go and pick at least three things that have been hanging around in my freezer or my pantry for far too long. Things that I don't even remember when I purchased them or, you know, that are starting to look a little bit freezer burnt and needs to be used up. So this is my hit list for this week. These are things that are used by in January. So, you know, they need to be used up. So here's what I'm thinking at this stage. Um, I think I'm going to do some sort of stir fry with this ginger chili tofu. Not that you can see that, that that's actually what it says. Ginger and chili. I am a bit worried that Charlotte won't like it because it's spicy. But if I think strategically about what I've got here, I know that she loves dal. So if I make extra of the dal, she can have dal instead of having the spicy or the potentially spicy stir fry. I think I'm going to throw in some of this uh, pineapple as well. There's four slices of pineapple. So Perhaps if I throw some of the pineapple in with the chili, it will take some of the heat out of it. I will need to go and get some stir fry veggies because I don't really have anything other than green beans to go with this, but that's okay. I've got rice. Um, I've got most of the stuff that I'm going to need here. If I have to go and just get some fresh veggies, so be it, but that's not too bad. Next thing I'm going to do is actually looking at the things that I'm thinking about purchasing now from the supermarket to make my fajitas I was looking at getting some tomatoes and some lettuce and possibly getting some capsicum for my stir fry so um, what I'm thinking I could do is grab an extra packet of wraps and with my salad stuff we could just do salad wraps with the koftas might be a quick and easy lunch. And then I pretty much have those things in my shopping cart anyways. So, you know, you're never gonna use up a full lettuce just having fajitas, but thinking of a way that I can incorporate another meal that is also going to use up some of those similar ingredients that I'm buying this week is a great way to save money and make sure that we are using up all of the things that we're purchasing. And all right, the tempeh that is not hugely popular with my husband and my child. So I'm thinking of a way that I can use this up and perhaps it's just lunches for me for the week that I do. But I'm looking at this, I'm actually looking at the picture on this as inspo and I'm thinking a really easy Buddha bowl would be a great way to use this up. So again, back to the ingredients that I'm already purchasing this week and I think a Buddha bowl would be another great way to use up similar ingredients but making something different but also not having to go out and buy a whole heap of new ingredients. So my Buddha bowl, I'm going to use some of the rice that I've already got. I've got corn. Um, I'm going to purchase some lettuce, some cucumbers, some capsicums. I think we can make it work. Maybe we even throw in a little bit of edamame as well, which I can see out there in the corner. And I can use up some of the edamame that I've got as well. 
All right, look at that. At this stage, this list is basically just writing itself. It's actually pretty easy, particularly once you get the hang of it. And like I said earlier, if you're starting to get stuck for ideas, if it's in a notebook, you can always flick back through earlier weeks and pick up some inspiration from there as well, looking at the things that your family likes to eat. Now, the next thing that I like to do on my list, and I know that I've only really done dinners at this point, but like I said, Breakfast is pretty much oats or some variation on that. And for lunch, we do a lot of leftovers. Uh, and sometimes I'll just cook up a specific dinner meal that we use as lunches. It's also nice to have a little bit of flexibility and freedom in there to do something else that maybe you haven't thought of just yet. So it's okay not to have it all completely penciled in. What I like to do now is look at what jobs that I need to do for the week ahead and make sure that I'm making time to do those things. So an example would be I really want to cook up the stock that I've got in the fridge freezer. My stock bag is completely full so I need to make that job happen. Not that I need to use stock this week, but it is something that I can do in advance and then I can freeze it and put it back in the freezer, but it's ready to go. So I like to have a bit of a jobs list. Baking is another one. So what snacks and treats do we want to have this week? We've got some strawberries in there that I could definitely turn into some strawberry muffins or a strawberry bread. Actually, I've got lemons that I need to use as well. So I'm thinking a strawberry and lemon loaf would be absolutely delicious. And you can see how this just all unravels fairly quickly once you start with one idea. Thinking about the things that you've already got. How can I incorporate maybe one more ingredient that I've already got on hand? That's basically what my brain was doing just then. I've got strawberries. I'm thinking strawberry muffins. What else have I got that I can throw in there and still use? I've got lemons. I've got lemons that need to be used up. So there you go. I'm going to jot those ideas down as well. I may get to them today. Maybe it's a day that I put aside later on down in the week. But if I've got these ideas already, then half of the work is already done for me. I really feel like coming up with the ideas is the tricky part. If I've got a list that's almost like a list of jobs, I can simply be looking at that and think, okay, I've got an hour where I'm not doing anything right now. I could definitely bang out some muffins. Done. I don't have to think about it. The idea is there. The ingredients are already there. It's already listed out for me. Kind of makes the whole thing a lot easier. All right, there we go. So I've also put cook the black beans on there as well. I don't need the black beans for this week, but what I do find with dried beans in particular is I find them difficult to incorporate into my meal plan because I need to add basically two extra steps into my meals to make it work. I need to soak them overnight, rinse them and then cook them and then they're ready to be used in a meal. So they're really cheap. They're a great source of protein and fiber and lots of vitamins and minerals but being in a caravan, being busy, even if it you're at home and you've got a busy work week and school week with the kids it can be a little bit tricky to incorporate dried legumes I think in my experience into a meal plan but if I've cooked them in advance one weekend and they're already in my freezer ready to go then all I have to do is pop them into a recipe. It makes it so much easier. So again, I'm doing my future self a favor by putting three things on my to-do list to get things ready. They're not even necessarily to do with this week, but next week I will include them because they're ready to go. So here we are now getting pretty much to the end of this my shopping list, which is in purple, is pretty short. I do like to color code things as well, you've probably noticed. So uh, what's in my fridge, which is fresh, is one color. My frozen stuff is a different color. Um, the stuff that's in my pantry, and this I can quickly identify. If I've got corn written on here twice, I know this corn's frozen because it's black, and I know this corn is in a tin because it's green. It also makes my little shopping list stand out so I can quickly see this when I'm in the shop. Um, and again, this correlates to what I've got over here in my meal plan. 
same color these are the things that i need to purchase so my shopping list for this week is pretty short i'm going to need a couple of packets of wraps a lettuce some tomatoes enough for two meals some asian greens i'm not sure what they're going to have there maybe some bok choy maybe some wombok i don't know we'll figure that out when we get there i need one more carrot for what we want to do some capsicum uh, some cucumber and then I'm starting to think about the other bits and pieces that we need so I know for snacks we don't have a lot of apples we probably will grab some apples and I'll check out what other fruit there is there I've just had a quick look through everything else that I need and I think we're good for milk tea and coffee things for the pantry we'll just make it work until we get to Coles at Tom Price well there we go that is not a bad effort I think a really great start to getting our meal plan for the week going and I actually have a bunch of ideas for meals that we can do for next week as well I would love to hear from you guys in the comments what would you come up with with the things that we've got on hand it gives me some good new fresh ideas fresh eyes looking at things a little bit differently love a little bit of inspiration so let me know in the comments what ideas you came up with I'm thinking there's definitely a burrito bowl in there with those spicy cauliflower bites we could do some sushi and some spring rolls I reckon I could even do a meatloaf with some of those lentils. Definitely got a bunch of ideas, but I'd love to hear from you guys as well. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time here with me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video and got some ideas out of it. If you did, as always, if you could please give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. It lets me know the kind of content you guys are enjoying and what you'd like to see more of. And if you'd like to see more from me and you haven't already hit that subscribe button, now would be a great time to just go down there and click that little red button it's the best way to be notified when my new videos come out don't forget to tick the notification bell that really helps so my plan from this point here on is I'm going grocery shopping tomorrow and I'm going to take you guys with me so I'll film that as well come into Exmouth let's go grocery shopping I'll show you the local supermarket you can see what we pick up to fill out this week's meal plan but you'll have to catch that in my next video today this is where we're going to wrap it up I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic week and I do hope to catch up with you in my next video but until then take care my friends and we'll chat soon bye